and joining me right now here on the Mark Moses Show to talk about her great career and her big 2022 in NXT. She's superstar Cora Jade. Cora, how you doing today? Hello, I'm great. How are you? Thank you for hey, having me. It is great to have you on. I am a big fan. Let's start with this. 2022, you start in NXT. How did the year go? Because it was a big one for you. It definitely was probably the biggest year of my professional wrestling career so far. Um, started off, you know, in, in a different direction. You know, I teamed with Raquel. I did a lot of that stuff. Did stand and deliver, which was great. Um, and then kind of towards the end of the year, kind of went a different direction. Um, got to face Roxanne Perez a bunch um, in the speed with uh, Wendy Chu right now. Um, I'm, I'm loving it. It's been it's been a great year for me and I hope to keep the momentum going into next. OK, so how did you get involved? in NXT wrestling? Um, well, I started watching w the WWE product when I was about eight years old because um, my dad and my younger brother kind of watched it together and I was just a huge fan of it. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is what I want to do. So uh, when I was about 15, 16, I started wrestling on the independent circuit around, around the country, but I started in Chicago because that's where I'm from. And then um, in the pandemic around and towards the end of 2020 i got um an email to come do a tryout and i did the tryout in october of 2020 and then made my debut in the dusty classic a few months later in january of 21 so it's been a crazy ride but that was how i got started and i've loved it every step of the way yeah that is really cool all right so you say you're from chicago was yeah. there was there like a wrestling school you went to what happened yeah, so I originally started trying to get trained when I was like 11 years old. I was just like looking up everything I could like and there wasn't a lot like of stuff around at the time. Um obviously and like anything I could find they were like you were way too young. You were not allowed to train to be a wrestler right now. Mm -hmm. Um so I did MMA for a little bit and then um when I was like 15 I found this place um I just googled it and it came up on Facebook um it was like uh, a wrestling training school like about 45 minutes from my house um it was freelance wrestling which is an independent promotion um but I went there and I started training and that was kind of the beginning of it all my trainers were uh Bryce Benjamin and Isaiah Velasquez Kevin Quinn who some people here have been trained by him so it's crazy when we make the movie of this, there has to be the scene where, like, I imagine you go to your parents and you're like, okay, <laughs> it's 45 minutes from here. Come on, guys. We could do this. Is that what it was? Yeah. Like? Well, I feel like it's it was even, like, crazier than that because I was, I was like, a freshman in high school. And I remember writing my parents a letter because I wanted to do this, but, like, I couldn't drive or anything. And I wrote them a letter and I was like. I really wanted to transfer from regular like public high school to online school so I could like graduate faster to be able to train. So I wrote them this long letter and they were like surprisingly very supportive of it. They um they let me leave public school and I they enrolled me into an online program and I um ended up finishing high school like two years early. I got my diploma, so I was done by the time I was 16. And then I started wrestling training and they've been super supportive. So I I couldn't be any luckier in that aspect they really like allowed me to have the push to kind of start this whole career so I couldn't have done it without their support did you keep this letter do we still have it I don't still have it and maybe they do maybe they do somewhere but yeah I remember like I just got home from I remember wherever I was that day and I was like I need to be a wrestler this is 45 minutes away because like the training didn't even start till like 8 p.m so like we'd have to leave my house my mom would drive me she would stay with me to like sometimes we wouldn't wrap up training till 12 1 a.m like we were just training all night long and she just sat there like all night with me until like it was time to drive me home so like she was great that is awesome that really is okay yeah so you're from chicago mm -hmm. Do people make fun of your accent because they make fun of mine all the time <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I never really realized that I guess had an accent, but now like even like my boyfriend or my friends will like say I do like the long a, a sound like when I say mom, like mom, like it's like the long, the long A, which I now I guess I, I hear it a little bit. What was it like, Cora Jade, the tryout with NXT? Take us through that experience. 
It was definitely probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. But luckily, um, one of my trainers, Kevin Quinn, he um, trained like CM Punk, Lita, like John Cena. He had a hand in like so many people um, in wrestling. And he like had been to Japan and done a bunch of stuff. He like ran a training school. So he would like put us through like these like Sunday training cardio days, we would call them. And like he would just like it was just so much conditioning and he would just it would be so much and it was so at the time exhausting but I think that really prepared me for the tryout because he kind of pushed us as much as we could be pushed then so it made me feel like I could do anything so when it came time for the tryout I felt very prepared and like everything I had down pat I was ready to like all the all the drills they had like I had already done them with my trainer before so I felt like he really prepared me in the best way possible but it's so mentally and physically um, exhausting and just you got to be sharp in, in your mind and in, in your physical movements and everything. It was the craziest thing and the hardest thing I've ever done. But at the same time, I felt like I came in very prepared because I wanted to be here so bad. Like I knew what it took to get here. Was there a point in the tryout where you're like, OK, I got this. I, I got it. We, we could do this. Yeah, so it's the first, I think it was like three days and the first two started with like drills and matches and then um, the last day was like the promos. So kind of once those first two days of the matches and stuff finished up, which was, I felt like my most nerve wracking, um, I guess, aspect of it, because I'm I'm very confident in, in, in the ring and in promos, but I feel like I really excel in promos and I love that and I feel very comfortable in that. So when it came time to do that and we did the matches and we did the promos after all was said and done. I felt very, I felt like I brought something different and felt very confident and I guess it worked out. So. Okay. So how long, all right. So you get, you get the call. They're like, we want you to join NXT, which is yep. amazing. Then how long did it take for you to then get on national television? Was it a couple weeks, months? What happened? So I got the email only two weeks before the tryout. So it was very short notice. So I got the email in the beginning of, or the middle of October. The tryout was at the end of October. Um, and then I debuted on TV for the Dusty Classic in January. So it was a very kind of quick process, like three, three months, two, three months. And then I just had to move my life from Chicago to Orlando, kind of in that like two, three month period. That's really awesome. By the way, for people who are watching this and, and listening, it's funny hearing you talk because on television, I don't trust you every week, <laughs> like every week. Cause I think one of my favorite moments of the year is when you threw that belt into the trash can. That was <laughs> awesome. What was that like in the moment? Cause I know the crowd must've been in shock. Yeah, that was crazy. Especially cause you know, I grew up, just seeing, you know, the the famous clip of Alundra Blaze throwing the title in the trash. Like, I feel like anybody who grew up a wrestling fan knows that clip. So just to do that and then kind of have my own kind of similar moment to that um, was crazy. And like to to be able to do that, it was everything I wanted and more. So um, it was crazy. Something I'll look back in my career and remember forever. All right. So you throw it into the trash can. You go backstage. What was that feeling like? Did people call you? Like, t take us through that. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone was like, oh, that was that was crazy. My mom, my mom called me and she was she knows the clip, obviously, of Alundra Blaze. And she was like, oh, that was so cool. Um, but yeah, it was just, I got you know, I'm, I'm glad that they trust me, you know, with that type of position and to be able to to do that and deliver it um, the best I could. But it was great. We're we're fans upset at you for doing that move. Definitely. I, I looked at my Twitter and then I was like, I'm going to close it. As soon as opened it, closed it. <laughs> They're pretty mad at me that day. Have you Have you gone around Orlando and do fans like make comments? Like, how dare you do that? Like, what happened? You know what's crazy? The other day I was driving and I was stuck in traffic and someone kept honking their horn at me. And I looked up and it was somebody with a Mandy Rose toxic attraction sign out the window and they were just booing me. And I was just in the front seat of my car and I was like, is this actually happening right now? Like, But yeah, even on the road, they hate me. What are the fans like this whole year? You know, mostly I'm trying to ask it positively. What's it like with the interaction? You know, the NXT fans are, the WWE universe in general is some of the most passionate fans I've ever witnessed in my life, but especially the NXT fans who are here, it's pretty much probably like the same 
same group of people that are here every week. You know, we film in the in the PC and they're they're very dedicated and they're super into it and they're a very solid fan base. So they're very passionate about who they love and who they hate. So sometimes it's a it's a love hate relationship. Right now, I think we're kind of in the hate relationship. They're not very happy me with me right now, but they're Team Wendy Chu right now. But it doesn't matter because no no, no. Ooh, Wendy Chu. It's the generation of Jade, and that's all I care about. Do we do we have a T shirt that I could get that says Cora Jade on it? I need one. Speaking of that, I do have my own T shirt now under here, Generation of Jade. <laughs> Um, it's funny that you bring it up. Right. Um, I do have two shirts out right now. Um, the Generation of Jade Heart Barbed Wire shirt. And then there's a second one on WWE Shop right now, Generation of Jade with the broken skateboard. Um, and there's also a long sleeve version and a hoodie version. Those are brand new. So you can get those now at WWE Shop for the live events. Does your mother, does she get these products for free? Because she made you. Like, is that like, does she have to pay what happened? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a bunch for them. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them and be like, this is for all the hours you spent I love sitting it. there at training with me. Well, real quick, NXT Live is gonna be at Fort Pierce coming up this Friday night. If you want to get tickets, etix.com. It's at the Havert L Fen Center. I've never been there. I need to go. Should fans come out and see this great event, Cora Jade? Absolutely, 100%, like you said, this Friday in Fort Pierce and then this Saturday in Tampa, NXT, with two big live events. Um, you're going to have to come out and see because I have a lot of things left to say. I know if you guys watched this Saturday at Deadline, I was screwed out of a moment, oh. uh, my moment. Yeah. Um, Roxanne Perez once again stealing my moment. So I'll probably have some things to say to her. Probably going to handle Wendy too because she's still – yapping in my ear so we got some things to handle but um this generation of jade is definitely flowing into the weekend of live events so i'm pretty excited okay bonus before i let you go how many hats do you own because every week i see you in a hat how many hats do you own right now yeah i've been wearing backwards hats since i was like 14 just because like i don't know i i hate doing my hair so i just like to throw a hat on and just call it a day um i probably have i don't know 50 hats 50, 50. I just <laughs> okay. I just like to. It's my favorite thing to buy. I go somewhere. I look for a hat. I shop online. I look for a hat. Vacation. Look for a hat. It's just this what you thing. <laughs> All right. To rep Chicago Cubs or White Sox. You know, I'm from the south side of Chicago, and my family is super big into baseball, so I'm going to have to go White Sox. That, that's who I root for. So there we oh, go. wow. Okay. There we go. Normally, it's Cubs, I feel. No, I, I, we're the other team. All right. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> Jade, it's very nice to meet you, and I know you had a, a gigantic year. You're going to have even a bigger year in 2023, so good luck and have a great holidays. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.